Hi, I'm Dave Samet from the Royal Australian Chemical Institute's Mentoring Program. Today I'm here with Tom Frith, who studied science and music at the Uni of New South Wales and was part of our mentoring program in 2015. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today, Tom. So it's been two years since you graduated. What are you up to now? I'm currently working at Ernst & Young, which is not somewhere where I ever thought I was going to end up when I started my science degree all those years ago. But as I was kind of getting towards the end of my degree, I started thinking that the PhD route potentially wasn't for me, that I needed to find some other, some other routes to kind of go down. And somehow I've ended up here through a bit of sheer will and determination. So what does, the, what does your role involve? Well, I'm working in um, audit and assurance, which is kind of the fancy way of saying I look at financial statements of different companies and make sure the numbers that are in them are correct which for me as a scientist is kind of what I'm about. I want to make sure that things are looking at it correct and true and exactly what they're supposed to be. How do your science skills influence the role? Definitely learned a lot about being analytical and process driven throughout my science degree. When you're looking at chemistry and you're looking at different reactions, you're looking at how you can build a process and get to where you want to be. When you look at something like audit in a accounting sense, it's about how the financial statements are built, how they come from the start, which is a couple of numbers in a you know, processing system, and how they then come through that process to the financial statements, which is what you're looking at. So figuring out how to analyse the statements and get to where they're supposed to be, that was a pretty big thing that does come from my science background, because you're not looking at something in a, a kind of nonsensical way, it's this is what it's supposed to be, this is how it gets there, and then follow that through. So it's a big jump from science to audit. How did you how did you get there? It was a bit of a process, I'm not gonna lie. It took a few months of I guess call it soul searching, if you will, trying to figure out where I wanted to be. I did spend a fair bit of time looking at all the big firms and how exciting it would be to work at them. But essentially it came down to figuring out what skills did I have, what interests did I have in the way that I had studied them to kind of get me to in into the field that I wanted to be. A lot of that came down to saying, you know, I don't want to be a management consultant, I don't want to work in policy as much as being a non-business study person would be. But looking at something that's like accounting, which is all about numbers and process driving and how my skills that I've learned are pretty applicable to that. And then kind of going from there. So what did you have to learn the hard way? Debits and credits, it's probably a pretty hard thing to learn. Um, but that, what I mean by that is the business acumen, the language of what you're looking at, which if you consider yourself uh, a chemist, you understand you know, different reaction mechanisms, you understand different parts of you know, physical chemistry that you've studied and that language of it. But when you move into something that you're not really aware of, say it's biology or accounting, there's a certain language that accompanies that, that you just, it's completely over your head got no idea what's going on. So trying to figure out what debits and credits were or looking at you know, different tax calculations and just not understanding a single word on the page, even though it's all written in English, that was a pretty big thing. So once you kind of you read more, you study more, you ask questions, you try and understand it, eventually those words start to click and you start to understand that language. That was, that took time. It was tough, but you get there in the end and you know, two years on, here we are. So what are the key lessons that you've learned from your job search and early career? Job search is being specific and tailoring your applications to where you need to be. And I, I mean that by don't look at something that you're not really going to be happy in. Don't look for something that you know, might sound flashy and cool because it's a great place to work. But look for something that you know, you're going to be suited for. And it doesn't mean that you've studied accounting, you've ended up in accounting. It means the skills that you have from whatever you've studied are going to be applicable to that firm and how they're going to be able to utilise what you have and what you know, even though it may not be on paper what they need, how it can move across into that. And from the early part of my career, it's essentially how business works, how the different skills that you know, we can achieve can kind of push something that might seem like an accounting firm into where it needs to be and how it can grow and develop. Thank you very much for your time, Tom.
This podcast is one of several mentoring activities that we do through the Royal Australian Chemi Chemical Institute. We have a careers blog on the RACI site and on my website, dcstechnical.com.au. We also have, have a number of podcast and uh, longer lecture videos available, the links to which are all uh, shown here. Thanks and best wishes.